Hello everyone! Welcome to the 6th lecture of ArchLine XP 2022 Intermediate course, which will be about making upholstered furniture. Let's get started! We will create this ottoman with the three commands of interior, smart objects, loft, smart object parts, and the assembled object command. But before we start modeling, we need to see what parts the furniture is made of. It consists of four legs, a base, and a cushioned seating. We will make the legs with the loft command and the other two elements by using the smart object parts command. Let's take a look at how we can do it. First, let's create the legs. As we can see, these are particular regs, not a regular cuboid. Profiles on the top and at the bottom are different, and the whole 3D shape is slanted. I choose the smart object loft command. First, I need to specify the path. This path can be vertical or horizontal or I can create a custom path if needed. For now, I choose vertical. I need to enter how long it should be. It will be 140 mm. Then I need to enter the cross-section profile in the second tab. I can add more than one profile to the path. Now I will need two. One will be at the bottom and the other at the top. The bottom will be 30 by 30 mm which I can specify here with the width and the height. I also need to create a top cross-section profile, which I can do here by clicking on the green plus button. I need to specify where this cross-sectional profile is located along the path. It is now set to 50%, so it will be located in the middle. Since I'm specifying the top, I set the slider to 100% and set the width and the height. This will be 50 by 50 mm, then I create it with the green tick. I'm almost done with the leg. Let's take a look at the picture to see what else needs to be changed. As we can see, it has two vertical sides and two slanted sides. I can adjust this by changing the reference point of the profiles. Let's start with the top one. I click on the cogwheel and then change the reference point to the lower left. This way, the bottom left reference point is connected to the middle reference point of the bottom cross-section profile. I have to change the bottom profile too. I can switch between profiles with the blue arrow. Clicking on the cogwheel, I choose the bottom left point again. I'm done with the geometry of the leg. I select the material on the third tab. This should be this Exot03. With that done, I save it to the library using the last tab with the save as command. Let it be called Esmeralda leg 1. The category should be living room and the subcategory should be accessorize. For the producer, we can either type or initials or leave it as it is. I accept, then place it. Let's continue with the base. I choose interior smart objects parts. With this command, we can easily create upholstered furniture elements. First, I need to specify the orientation. Let it be horizontal. In the fourth tab, I need to specify the frontal profile, which will now be the floor plan profile. The other two tabs are the vertical and the horizontal guides. Here we can see what each one means. So, on the fourth tab, I select the frontal profile 1, because as we can see, the base has edges, which I'm going to round off a bit. Then I need to enter the dimensions. It will be a 600 by 450 by 100 mm element. Finally, I will round the edges. I select Round All Edges option and enter 1 mm. It's worth setting the surface resolution to high especially on cushion, where the difference in the resolution will be noticeable. The only thing left is to specify the material, and I choose Cream 01. If it is not in our favorites list, we can click on the blue plus to search the library for the desired material. I save it to the library as Esmeralda Base 1. Also in the living room, Accessorize Categories, I accept it and place it. The last thing is the cushion which I'm going to make with interior smart objects parts command. Since the dimensions of the base and the cushion are almost the same except for the thickness, I don't have to start from scratch 
but can record the object I just saved. Let's go to the first tab and change the thickness to 160 mm. Now I'm going to add pillow effect on the top. I can do this with the effects tabs. I can add an effect on the top and on the bottom of the element. I can add different effects, but now I need the pillow effect. I set the padding depth to 100 mm. I can choose to add this effect to the full surface or to the specific area. Now I need the full surface. I create it with the green tick button. I go back to the first tab and adjust the surface resolution to see the difference I just mentioned. This element is also complete. I save it to the library with the save as command as I don't want to override the base. Let it be called Esmeralda Pillow 1. The category is the same as for the previous two items. I accept this and place this as well. We have the furniture elements ready. Now we need to assemble the ottoman. I can do this under Interior Smart Objects Assembled Object. Here I need to add the parts from the library that I have saved. So I click on the blue plus sign and select the category I saved them in, the Living Room Accessorize category, and then select Esmeralda Base 1. It appears in red because I haven't placed it yet. I can do this with the green tick. I can only place a new item by clicking on the green plus. If I select an item without it, the previous item is overwritten and only the new items appears. So I always click on the green plus first and then select the new item from the library. I will continue with the leg. We just have to position it. I can determine the exact position using color coordinate systems. The relative coordinates option should be turned off so I will be able to work more accurately and will be able to enter values easily. Let's first look at the blue axis, along which we need to move it down. The value should be minus 140 mm. Along the red axis, let's move it by minus 265 mm. And along the green axis, I move it by 185 mm. This will move the first leg into position. As I said, we can add another element with the green plus. In this case, the program warns us that a new instance of this leg will be created. This is just we need. I need to move this in the right position as well in the same way. I move it down to minus 140 mm. I just have to play with the signs for the other values. I rewrite the offset value along the red axis to positive. I finish with another leg. I click on the green plus again, then move that down to minus 140 mm. And then rewrite the green axis value to minus 185 mm. This also moves into place, and now I only need to place one leg. After the green plus button, I move the last leg down to minus 140 mm, then along the red axis I move it to minus 265 mm. So I'm finished with the position of the legs. The last thing to do is to add the cushion seating. I click on the base and then on the plus button. Then the new element will be placed on the top of the base. I select the cushion that I have created. However, I still need to fine-tune the bottom of the cushion as it is on the original object. To do this, I click on the pencil icon. The parts dialog appears where I can modify the properties of the cushion. I'm going to create a cushion effect on the bottom as well. The scope of this will cover the entire surface and padding depth should be 100 mm. Then I override the saved cushion with the save button. I also modify the item in the assembly dialog. I move this further down. I can enter values or simply click the blue arrow 
and push the cutscene into base. However, I'm not quite finished with the ottoman yet, because I need to adjust the legs as the original has vertical sides of each leg facing outwards. I'm going to click through the legs and rotate them one by one. I have to rotate this one 90 degrees, the second one 180 degrees, and the fourth one 270 degrees. So now all legs are facing the right way. Now I can save the ottoman to the library. I click on the save as and name it. Save it in the living room puff subcategory. I will accept it and place it in 3D. This completes the first piece of furniture. Now let's make a slightly more complicated chair. To do this, I'm opening a Maasai chair project. Before modeling, let's look at what parts the chair is made of. I activate the 3D view. The chair consists of a cord back panel that runs the full height of the chair, a seating, and two curved legs. Let's look at what is needed to make this piece of furniture. We will draw several profiles to help us with the modeling. And we have three photos of this chair. One of them will be very handy for us later on. To draw the shape of the backrest, I will use the first picture from the folder. It is true that it is a perspective photo, but I can easily draw the backrest around it. Let's see how we can use this in the program. I simply drag the image onto the floor plan and place it. Since the image is not scaled, I have to calibrate it. I right click on it and select Calibrate. I know the dimensions of the chair, therefore the height which is 1170 mm. I select the bottom point, enter the top point and then write in 1170 mm. That way I have a true to scale photo and can easily work with it. I'm going to draw the profile in 2D. I will use the drafting polyline tool to draw around the backrest or more precisely just one side of it. Since we need a symmetrical profile, I will mirror the half profile I drew next to it. I find the center of the backrest using the midpoint between two selected points option. I specify the two points so I can start drawing from the midpoint. First, I draw a horizontal line. Then, I select the arc on the top. Draw a tiny arc and continue with a straight line until the cushion. From here, I will continue with the leg part, which I will draw with the smooth option and then the arc command. This way I will be able to draw the line in a nice tangential way. I click down at the button, then turn off the smooth option and draw the bottom horizontal line. I'm going to do an arc again, then I just need to get back to the center of the back with a straight line. I use the auxiliary line to help me with this and then press enter to finish the command. I have to mirror the drawing next to it. I select the polyline, then the rotate mark it. I find the option mirror a copy. Specify the axis of the mirroring and the backrest profile is completed. I select the two polylines and place a copy next to them. The next profile will be the area of padding. If we look at the 3D, we can see that the chair has much thicker pillow effect at the top than at the bottom. So I have to specify that as a separate area. That's what I'm going to draw for now. The easiest way to do this is to make another copy of the backrest profile and then draw a horizontal line where the pillow effect ends. I then use the delete between points command to delete the bottom lines. 
Then I change the length of the line to close the profile. It is complete. The next is the seed profile. We know that the seed surface is 500 by 500 mm, so I'm going to create a rectangle that size. I draw a rectangle, then rewrite its dimensions to 500 by 500. I click on one of the nodes and select the fillet command. I just click on the other nodes and they will be rounded as well. The seed profile is now finished. The next will be these two vertical profiles, which will give the backrest and the legs their vertical guides. I use the arc to create the two profiles. The first will be 1170 mm high. I adjust the radius to get a similar result as the profile above. In the same way, I will make the profile of the legs. This will have a height of 350 mm. Let's modify further the backrest profile since the upper node is not in line with the lower one as I drew it. I can move the top node a bit by using the move endpoint command. Now that we have finished drawing the profiles, we can start making the furniture elements. In the interior, smart objects, I create the legs by loft. First, I enter the path of the leg by pressing the star button. I can then select the custom profile I just drew. By clicking on the select an item in the options menu, I can easily select the line that I have drawn. The custom path is now created. I still need to specify the cross-section profiles. Here again, I will use the two profiles. There will be a bottom and a top one. First, I specify the top, which will be 50 by 50 mm square profile. I can choose any other profile, but the current one is just fine for now. I add another cross-section profile with the green plus sign. As before, I need to set where the new profile should be placed on the path. It will be at the bottom, so I set the slider to 100%. The size of this should be 10 by 10 mm. I create it with the green tick. By the way, I can create any number of profiles on the path. I show you now. Click on the plus sign to create another 30 by 30 mm one. I create it with the green tick and then use the slider to change its position to get a completely different result. I delete this as it is not necessary for this chair. What I still need to set is the surface resolution, which I set high here, and that the bottom and the top endings are horizontal. Finally, I need to choose the material. Let it be old ash tree. Next, I save it to the library under the name Marseille leg in the dining room category. And since there is no parts subcategory, I'm going to make one. I accept and place the leg. The next element will be the seat. I can do this on the interior smart objects parts. I'm going to set its position to horizontal and I'm going to select the front view profile tab, which in this case will be the floor pan profile. I'm going to set the custom profile that I just drew. After the star button, I select the inner point of the closed loop and simply click inside the shape. The object is created. On the first tab, I'm going to specify the dimensions of the profile, which is 500 by 500 mm. I'm going to set the thickness to 100 mm. I also set the high surface resolution here. I run the edges, but not all of them equally, so I give the values separately. The side and the front rounding are 20 mm, but the back panel will only have a 10 mm rounding. I choose the Cream 01 material, which I've used before. Next comes the pillow effect. I choose the top part and then make a 50 ml padding covering the entire surface. I create it with the green tick. The seat is done. 
I save it to the library under the name Maasai Pillow in the dining room parts subcategory. I place this one next to the leg. Now all that's left is the backrest, which is a slightly more complicated shape, but we will be able to model it very easily. I'm going to do that with the Smart Object Parts command. The orientation will be now vertical. I can specify the object's horizontal and vertical guide and its frontal profile. Here I will use the last two. First, I'm going to specify the frontal profile, which is going to be a custom. So I'm going to press the star icon and I'm going to select the inner point of the closed loop and click into the profile. This gives me the shape, but I also need to specify the vertical guide, which will be the curved profile I drew last. I define custom profile again and click on the select an item command to select the arc. Then I press enter to accept. I've got the curved shape. By the way, if it would be curved horizontally, I could set in the horizontal guide tab. On the first tab, I need to set the dimensions. The width of the profile is 430 mm and the thickness is 40 mm. That's it. I don't need to and I also can't adjust the height of the profile as it is given by the profile. I run the edges with the round all edges command and enter 20 mm. Note that since the thickness of the back is 40 mm, but the rounding more than 20 mm on all sides will not work well. I set the resolution to high and set the cream 01 material. Finally, effects can be applied. On the thick step, I add the pillow effect. First, I apply it to the full surface area with a 30 mm padding depth. And then I add another one by pressing the plus button. I don't apply this to the full surface, but to a custom area. After pressing the star button, I get the frontal profile of the backrest, which I will place exactly on the profile I drew. I click on the closed loop in a point of an area and click in the profile. Using the green tick mark, I create a custom pillow effect, which will have 50 mm padding depth. Finally, I create the tufting in the upper part of the backrest, as we can see it on the 3D. I click on the plus button and select the tufted effect. I need to specify the spacing. Let's try the 100 by 100 mm spacing first. Clicking on the green tick, the tufting appears. I also specify the radius of the padding 50 mm. The tufting shouldn't be like this. I need to increase the spacing. I need to specify a value greater than the width of the backrest horizontally to get a column of tufting in the middle. Let it be 220 mm. I also adjust it vertically to 250 mm. There are only three dots left, but I have to move this by 50 mm to get them in the right place vertically. This completes the backrest. I save it to the library under the name Marseille Back to the same category as the previous ones. And place it. Let's look at it in the 3D. We have all parts, now we need to assemble them. I choose Interior, Smart Object, Assembled Parts and I search library for the saved elements. Let's start with the backrest. I create it with the green tick and then add the first leg. I need to position this. Along the red axis I move it by 200 mm to the right. Along the green axis by minus 400 mm. I add the second leg with the plus button and adjust that into position as well. I rewrite the value along the blue axis to zero. Along the red axis I move it by minus 200 mm. After placing the seat I will fine tune the position of the legs and rotate them. 
But first, I will place the seat. I'll add a new element with the plus button and then select the pillow. Let's look at the positions. The red axis value should be zero, so it will be centered. I also need to drag it back along the green axis. I'll do this graphically. I can use arrows to fine tune the position. Let's get back to the legs. I will adjust them along the green axis, both in value and graphically. Finally, the position should be minus 510 mm. I rewrite this value for the other legs as well. The last step is to rotate the left leg around the right blue axis by 180 degrees. This completes the assembly of the chair. All that's left is to save it to the library. Let's call it Marseille chair and save it in the dining room category in the chair subcategory. Lastly, I will show you how to modify a component of the finished furniture. To do this, I activate the floor plan window, select the furniture, and then enter its properties using the pencil icon. Let's change the curve of the backrest, for example. To do this, I click on the pencil icon, then in the parts dialog, I select the vertical guide tab, and click on the pencil again. I place it on the floor plan, then simply select the top end point and move it backwards. I accept it with Enter. I override the backrest. And then the finished furniture with the modified backrest. In the 3D, we can immediately see that the curve of the backrest has been modified. This brings us to the end of this workshop. I hope it has been useful. I look forward to seeing you again. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.